As a Ravens fan, we're used to the process in the offseason. It may start a little slow, then it may pick up just a tiny, tiny bit, uh, but then it slows down a lot after that, and it's a lot of the same old stuff. But this offseason, this offseason was far from the norm. It wasn't your typical Baltimore Ravens offseason. And they did a lot of stuff where they went above and beyond more than they have in a really, really long time. But to talk about exactly what they did and to talk about exactly some of the reasons why they may have done it, I couldn't do it alone. I had to bring on a very, very special guest to help me out. Ain't no chance what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got a made it. Got a made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Team, keep it clean. Very, very special guest in the building. Uh, and before we get into the subject at hand, let me introduce you to the Kid Gallery. First and foremost, appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule, out of your busy day uh, to come join us over here. Team, keep it clean. Um, but how'd you get started? Let, let everybody know what you do and how you got started doing it. You right. do a lot of different stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first and foremost, I want to say I appreciate you having me on this Uh show because i am a team keep it clean member uh, i'm a subscriber and all that stuff so big shout out to you i always like to give you your flowers because you are the person that i go to when i want to hear opinions on ravens news but appreciate it all that being said uh basically my start came from um way before people knew me Th to be honest with you when i was in high school uh, i was really in indulged in youtube uh, I just every time I got home from school or whatever, I was always consuming YouTube and different things like that. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point to where I wanted to start creating content. So I flirted with it from here and there. And then eventually, you know, way later, like a decade later, uh, I end up blowing up from doing an, a LeBron James impersonation. Oh, yeah, the, so that one. Yeah. Want to talk about it's the, mm -hmm. you know, I did that video. It went crazy. <laughs> it was on ESPN. It was everywhere. Um, and after that, I was kind of just like, okay, like I got something here and pretty much I put my foot into the ground and just kept running. So mm. once again, that's pretty much how I got my start. And, and it's been cool to see it too, man. Um, I remember before I knew who you were, I saw the LeBron James video. Yeah. I'm like, man, this dude like spot on with his LeBron James impersonation. Man. But how, how has it been? Cause we, we see you work with the NFL, like doing stuff with the Ravens and whatnot. We see you work with the NBA. Uh, I've been seeing getting the shoes sent out and all that. I'm like, oh man, got it moving, man. How, how how has that experience been for you? Just to be um, like reaching those heights. Man. To be honest with you, it's all surreal. Like even to this day, like I'm I'm about maybe five years into it, like actually establishing a brand and actually building on top of that. So I'm about like five years in, and it's still surreal to this day. Just having the connections that I have. Um, you know, basketball players who send me sneakers, like you just said, like the people like James Harden, Steph Curry, different things like that. And these are like top tier guys. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. like, hold on. So <laughs> it's really cool just having it because it's like, bro, like these are the type of situations that you dream about as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I wanted to actually be a sports journalist. So I ended up leaning into this sports journalistic lane, but it's through creating content. Right. So it's kind of just like, I, not only am I fulfilling my dream, but I'm also getting the benefits of working with mm -hmm. the NFL and the NBA. So if you would have asked me when I was younger, like, did I imagine doing this? I probably would have said I would hope to do it, but I never would have thought I'd actually be doing it. So, you yeah. know, once again, it's, a, it's a surreal feeling. Yeah. And, and now you're doing it. So for all these people, so they can see your stuff, see what you're working on, see what you've been doing. Let mm -hmm. everybody know where they can find you at, whether Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. Bet. So you can find me anywhere on any platform. It don't matter what you're looking for. Uh, it's at the Kid Gowie. So that's D-A-K-I-D-G-O-W-I-E. Once again, D-A-K-I-D-G-O-W-I-E. I like to, to sound like those little lawyer commercials. Like if you, <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for a settlement, uh, be called, be sure to call. And, you know, I like to give it like that so people know what I'm talking about. All right, and, I, and I'll put everything down below in the description, too, to make it easy, super easy for people. Even though you made it easy for everybody, I'm going to make it even easier for them so they can find you. Now, you said you about five years in, right? Yeah. So is Eric DaCosta. And um, Eric DaCosta, did this offseason, he he's done things quite differently than he's done the previous five years. 
Mm -hmm. um, and he's taking a much, much different approach, a much, much more aggressive approach. Now, I know you have been somebody that's been very adamant, um, been, been very outspoken uh, when it's come to the Ravens' approach at the wide receiver position and how it's been and, and how it's impacted the, the team over the years, especially recent years, and how you feel like they should have always done more. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about this approach, how Eric DaCosta and them have handled things this offseason at the wide receiver position? Man, listen, this approach that EDC just had this offseason, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm just yeah. like, you know, that I'm fulfilled. Yeah. Uh, the moment <laughs> the moment we landed OBJ, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, we getting somewhere. And I just had my fingers crossed for Zay Flowers or Jackson Smith and Jig. But I was like, one of those two, just give me one of those guys and you won't hear a peep out of me. So when we, <laughs> when we got Zay Flowers, I was like, oh, yeah, like I'm, I'm done. You, you can get whoever you want. I don't care what corner you get, I don't care what contact you get. I got my guys, and that's what I'm ready to – I'm looking forward to that. So um, it's really cool, though, because you kind of just see the gradual build. And I know that we gave them a lot of flack at the wide mm -hmm. receiver position, but then mm -hmm. you also look at our tight end position. And, you know, they beefed that up the year before. So you yeah. beef up the tight ends, and then you beef up the wide receiver room. It's just like Lamar really just has so many weapons, and they're all different type of players. And I think that's what I love most. It's not like the same type of caliber of wide receiver or the same type of caliber of tight end. Every single person has a unique thing that they bring to the team. And I think that's what really separates us from the rest of the NFL. And I think that's what makes us the most exciting. Hmm. Now, what, what do you think prompted this change in the way that Eric DaCosta attacked the position this year? Lamar's contract. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. I'm just like, bro, like you have a superstar quarterback. And when I say superstar, I'm not just talking about, you know, some guy that's that's glorified in Baltimore. Like we're talking about a guy who has ties to Florida to who pretty much like brought that bridge over because I don't know where it transpired from. But Florida has a very big Ravens fan base, and you're one yeah, of them. They do. So it's like it's cool to see somebody, you know, connect that bridge because it's like, oh, we have a quarterback from South Florida. <laughs> um, yeah. so you have that going on. You got kids and uh, baseball players from other countries wearing his jersey, and it's like, yo, mm -hmm. we really have something here. So um, just to have that caliber of a player when that's up in the air, and you got to make sure he's satisfied. Mm -hmm. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you know overdo or step out of your comfort zone and do what you need to do in order to keep him happy. So that's yeah. what it was. No, yeah, that, that's true. It's very important to keep Lamar Jackson happy, especially if you're going to be investing in Lamar Jackson. It's important to invest in him in more ways than one. And the Ravens definitely did that uh, this offseason. Now, yeah. um, of course, we wish that this would have happened years ago. And they, mm -hmm. they tried some different things and whatnot. They took some different swings. They took – some safe swings and some risky swings. Um, most safe swings as far as the first round picks like a Hollywood Brown, uh, Rashad Bateman. Um, and then there was some, some like, well, you know what? I can't even really say risky swings, but just, there's been a Deshaun Jackson. There's a Dez Bryant. There's a Sammy Watkins. There's a Seth Roberts. There's a Willie Sneed. So Demarcus Robinson. Um, so solid guys, but yeah, you get it. Yeah. Uh, but um, right now, where the Ravens are sitting at, Rashad Bateman, Odell mm -hmm. Beckham Jr., uh, Nelson Aguilar, mm -hmm. Devin DuVernay, um, James Prochet, I think it's to be determined. We'll see what happens. Tylen Wallace, I think he's to be determined as well. Mm -hmm. um, Zay Flowers, do you feel like what the Ravens have right here, right now, is enough to get the job done? In my personal opinion... I do, but you know, you know, with the the whole D Hop thing still lingering, I like I don't listen. Oh, boy, I don't man. think <laughs> I don't think we're gonna make the move. I don't man. think we're gonna make the move. But you know, it's just it's there. You know, it's there for the taking. Mm. But the current guys that we do have, I do believe that it's enough because we just got to keep in mind what Lamar Jackson was capable of doing with the guys that he had. You know, the mm -hmm. seven. Roberts, the Miles Boykins, the Hollywood Browns. And, you know, I liked Hollywood a lot. Like, I really, I, I'm a mm -hmm. big guy on Hollywood. So it's like you kind of get your Hollywood and the Zay Flowers, but in a stockier form, uh, more willing to take those tackles and just different type of things like that. So I just feel like the versatility, once again, of the wide receiver room really benefits us a lot. Um, Nelson Aguilar, he can contribute. He's a Super Bowl champion. But when you have an Odell Beckham Jr., you finally have like your true number one. 
um, or, you know, Rashad Bateman, if you consider him the true number one, um, mm -hmm. he still has to prove that. But I, I have a lot of faith in him. I like that pick as well. So mm -hmm. I think just it's the injury bug, man. If we can get past yeah. that injury bug, that will decide everything. But if we have a healthy Ravens team, there's no doubt in my mind that we can get it done. Man, you brought up uh, DeAndre Hopkins. And, and I almost wish in the interview that he did the other day, I almost wish Brandon Marshall and them ain't even asked about nothing with Lamar Jackson, the Ravens. I wish they wouldn't have just, they wouldn't even brought that up because it like, man, I like, I was hoping, man, especially when we heard the, the, the report that Lamar Jackson asked for both of them, like both <laughs> OBJ and DeAndre. I was like, all right, Lamar, hey, I'm right there with you. Um, and then when it got like right before the draft and it was all these rumors about, oh yeah, the DeAndre Hopkins and the Ravens, they close, they close. So I was thinking, oh, oh, oh this thing about to really go down, really? Right. Um, but it didn't end up happening. And then, then when they uh when they drafted Zay Flowers, like for me, it was a bittersweet thing. Uh, because it was like, oh, okay, they drafted Zay Flowers, and then when I like did, did some more research on him, like, okay, good pick. I like the pick, but at the same time, I think that had sort of officially ended the DeAndre Hopkins uh to the Ravens. Um, even though I mean Oh, yeah, it's probably ain't happening, but still a tiny, hey. tiny chance. But <laughs> you got to cling on to that little bit of hope. <laughs> we, can, we can tell ourselves we ain't going to get them, but we got to save that little space. Like, hold on, but maybe yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. It's sitting there in the reserve, but I'm going I'm, to I'm chill. We're going to see, but I'm going to chill. I, I, I expect him to go to the Buffalo Bills, though. But that, again, that's, that's just me. I, I think that that's where he ends up. But we'll see. Um. But it's been really nice to uh, it's really nice going into a season mm -hmm. and not having to have the conversations, not having to have the dialogue and, and the topic of conversations about wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, because it, it really feels good this year. It really feels like they got that handled. They got that taken care of. And it's crazy because it almost feels like not that there are too many mouths to feed. But I, like that, that's that's a good problem to have, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, when you have a plethora of weapons, because just on wide receiver alone, like again, going down the list, Odell Beckham Jr., Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, them top three alone, it's like, oh, okay, we got some. But then you still got Devin Duvernay, you still got Nelson Aguilar too, uh, and then we'll see who else makes it out the cut. But just wide receiver alone, it's like, okay, Ravens set up nice right now. But then, yeah, like you mentioned, they beefed up the tight end room. Mm -hmm. So we got, we still got one of the best tight ends in the game in yeah. Mark Andrews. So it's like, but before we even get to tight end, it's like, oh, they, 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 they might be set. But then you get to tight end, it's like, oh man, you got Mark Andrews too, Isaiah Likely coming too. Mm -hmm. And now with, with somebody else who I've been seeing a lot of people ranting and raving about him is Charlie Kolar. Mm -hmm. um, and they think that he could be special as well. Um, so we'll see what goes down with that. But as far as, Something that you brought up before, Lamar Jackson being happy. How, how, how do you think Lamar Jackson is feeling right now going into this I, season? To be honest with you, I feel like Lamar Jackson is ecstatic, but he's trying to keep it on the low. He's trying, <laughs> you know, I mean? he's, he, he's trying to play the humble card. Like, oh, yeah, you know, this is cool. You know, I got what I nah, – nah, Lamar is excited because you look at the rosters that we had before, and I'm not mm. going to say, like, Lamar was completely helpless, but there could have been room for more help for him, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to the targets. And, you know, we had the whole wide receiver conversation. So it's like now you're in a position, like you said, where you have so many mouths to feed. And that's yeah. a great problem to have. It's like, OK, like I got to feed Zay. I got to feed OBJ. But dang, Nelson right there. Oh, dang. Mm -hmm. You know, dude is over here. I call him Diet Debo Samuel. So it's like, <laughs> so you have all these different mouths to feed. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. like if somebody does happen to get hurt, knock on wood, um, you just got another replacement. It's really next man up. And it's a mm -hmm. quality man that's stepping up. It's not just like you getting the bottom of the barrel and Ravens are going out here and getting somebody extremely past their prime. It's like, no, you have a young guy that's right. going to step in and be that next person up. So I think he's ecstatic, to be honest with you, between the contract, being the highest paid player in NFL mm -hmm. history, having a wide receiver room, having a tight mm -hmm. end room. You still got your backfield, new offensive coordinator. There is no reason why Lamar should even be humble right now. I'll be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me, though. Now, now, something that you mentioned earlier, which I really liked, um, you talked about the receivers and the different skill sets that they bring to the table. Yeah, uh, which that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing because – 
that just makes it that much better. That gives you that many more options and different looks you can give to defenses. Now, um, speaking about looks that you're giving to defenses, how do you feel and what are you expecting from Ravens' new offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin? Um, to be honest with you, I expect to air it out this year. Um, mm -hmm. I really do expect to air it out. I think that, obviously, the run game will still be – our bread and butter. But I think that in terms of actually drawing up great schemes, that's going to get us a lot of passing yards. That's going to get mm -hmm. us down the field, um, kind of speed those drives up. I should say, not really waiting down to the play clock, trying to play the whole <laughs> clock management thing. We're not doing that, bro. We trying to put <laughs> points up like it's basketball, 24 second shot clock. And mm -hmm. we done it. So that's kind of where my mind is. I expect Todd to kind of just come with that type of um, intensity and then on top of that, you look at, you know, the quarterbacks that Todd Munkin had in the past between like, um, what's the dude's name? Uh, Jameis Winston. So you have a Jameis Winston who's throwing for a ridiculous amount of yards. And I'm looking yeah. like, okay, Jameis, he was airing it out. We have Lamar Jackson. I feel like he can do the exact same. So draw up some similar schemes and we'll see where we can go from there. But I do expect this to be Lamar Jackson's, like, uh, in terms of yardage, his best passing season. Mm, yeah, I like that. Now. Without putting you on the spot, but at the same time, put you on the spot. Let's get it. Record prediction, how good or bad uh, do you think these Baltimore Ravens are going to be this year? I'm going to be completely honest with you. Since I am on the spot, I'm going to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. I haven't even looked at the schedule like that. But I'm okay. going to just go off the top of my head and say, at, at most, four losses. Okay. At the most, okay. four losses. Um, I, I, I plan to be at maybe 10 games this year because I, I i am going to some away games i plan on pulling up to the jacksonville game too okay okay we're we gonna see but I, i'm gonna say four losses because you know once again the baltimore ravens under lamar jackson we don't lose that much uh yeah. we may lose you know when it matters but <laughs> we don't lose that much in the regular <laughs> season so i'm not seeing a real bad season in terms of losses uh, so whoever they bring in, whoever they have us an underdog against, you know, mm -hmm. sleep with your eyes open. <laughs> okay. Kind of how look at it. All right. And now how far do you think these Ravens could go? Mm. All right. So uh, humbly speaking, <laughs> <laughs> humbly speaking, I do, man, I just think that the Ravens are always that underdog team. Like it, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter who we have, regardless of what's, taking place with the team people always count us out and i say like the way that the media cycle goes it's you leave the baltimore ravens out of the the top list so whether it's the top teams of the afc or top teams or whatever they keep us off these lists then after a few weeks it's oh the ravens are you know they're running so, then after that it's oh lamar jackson should be in the mvp conversation then we get to the playoffs oh we're banking on the ravens and then things go left it's like mm -hmm. when you doubt us that's when we're at our best so the way I look at it is as long as we keep that underdog mentality, they can really take it all the way. I mean, that's what we've been built on. Like the Ravens have never been that team that you expect to really show out. And then when the year comes, it's like, oh, no, nah, this team is for real. Um, so I think they can go all the way. Now, granted, the AFC is is very hefty. It's, yeah. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not an easy feat. So if you're being realistic, you do have the teams like the Kansas City Chiefs and yeah. the the Buffalo Bills and all these other mm -hmm. uh, squads. But it's like, I really think that this is the team that can get it done. Once again, barring the injuries. Right. That's big. That can get it done. That's that's really been our Achilles heel. All right. So, Gary, hey, appreciate you again yes, for, for coming through. One more time uh, before we get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you at. Once again, you can find me at D-A-K-I-D-G-O-W-I-E. And once again, that is D A. K I D G O W I E. If you need consultation, you can have it. <laughs> but appreciate you for having me. Oh, for sure, man. Here. For sure. Thanks, man. I love the content. I'm a subscriber myself, and I just want to give you your flowers while I was here. Appreciate that, man. Th thanks again for coming on. Hey, team, keep it clean. Make sure you follow him on everything. Everything will be down below in the description. So you ain't got no excuses as to why you couldn't find it, even though he done spelled it out for you. And it's simple. And we're going to put it on the screen, too. So it's simple, but we'll put it in the description, too. So it's simple. I love y'all. I appreciate you. Team, keep it clean. We out.
fuck you up, we playing football. Huh? Okay. I'm a fanatic. Uh-huh. You see, we got the magic. Hey, yeah, my we boys are savage and open challenge and madden. <laughs> Let's go. Make a rage quit, exit out the door. Exit out the door.